everybody. You're listening to Big Blend Radio with Nancy Lisa, the publishers of BigBlendMagazines.com. Our next guest is natural health expert, Dr. Kathy Groover. She is a natural health consultant, a medical massage therapist, a raking master, and a traditional naturopath. And she has all of these, you know, qualifications just to see if I can pronounce them all in one sentence. Uh, she's also the author of The Alternative Medicine Cabinet, a book of natural health tips, and you can learn more if you go to her website directly, The Alternative of medicinecabinet.com. Of course, you can get it on Amazon, all those great online stores. But go to her website because she's got a lot of good stuff going on, a lot of great tips. She's got a good newsletter that comes out every month and keeps us informed. And if you go to qualityoflifemagazine.com, you can read her articles and also listen to her past interviews with us. So, Dr. Kathy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Well, we're, we're glad we're, we haven't blown up the world after yeah. we chatted with our last guest. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting there. So. Well, that's that's good. That would be a bummer. Yeah. I know. We don't want to blow up the world. We're not but... ready for that yet. No, no. But, you know, I know today we're going to talk about pain, and there's so many people in pain that we end up taking a lot of pills, and, and sometimes that's necessary, right? You dropped out. I didn't hear the question. I said there's um, sometimes you when you're in a lot of pain, you do need to take pills, but there's times yes. when you don't need to take pills. Yes, absolutely. And I have so many clients that, I mean, because I still have a massage practice where people come to me and maybe they have a herniated disc or maybe they're post-surgery and they say, I don't want to take pain meds, I don't want to take pain meds. And, you know, I totally get that. But also it's not good for your body to be in pain. So being able to quell that pain in many circumstances is good. You don't want to stress out your body. It raises your blood pressure. It causes all these other issues. If you have this pain that could be easily managed with pain meds if, you know, for a good reason. Again, if you're post-surgery, if you're having a back issue, things like that. But pain should indicate that there's something wrong. We have mm-hmm. pain to tell us that something's not working in our bodies. So if we don't know what's causing the pain and we just mask it with medication, that can be dangerous because then, well, what's causing it? You know, we want to get to the root mm-hmm. cause of it and get rid of it if we can. So just masking it is not a good idea either. Okay. So, it, like, if you get, a, you know, headaches all the time, that's when you not you need to start finding out what's going on. Yeah, I mean, especially headaches. I have so many clients that have headaches and they've maybe been diagnosed with migraines or not diagnosed with migraines or they assume they have a migraine. And, you know, migraines are really specific things. And just because it's a really bad headache doesn't mean it's truly a migraine. There are other symptoms that go along with that. Um, But, yeah, I mean, people would walk into my office five different people and they might walk out with five different treatments because I want to get to the root of the issue. I want to know why they're having headaches. Is it jaw tension? Do I want to do really intense jaw and neck massage? Is it a vertebrae out of place where I might send them to the local chiropractor to get their neck put back in alignment? You know, there's multiple reasons for the headache. There's multiple solutions for the headache. And I think we have to get back to individualizing medicine and looking at what the real issue is. Do you think a lot more people now might be clenching their jaws or grinding their teeth at night? Yes, I see tons and tons yeah. and tons of that. Tons of that. And that's that's a pretty easy fix. Um, yeah, you can get the mouth guard, um, and that will protect your teeth. But I have clients that have chewed through their mouth guard. Wow. So it doesn't stop the clenching. It just protects your teeth. So you want to, um, you know, get a massage. If you can loosen it up and break that cycle of tension, then oftentimes the jaw will start to relax. Or that's a, another great place to do visualizing, too. If you visualize, you know, as you're falling asleep, that's when a lot of people clench. If you visualize, you know, your jaw staying relaxed and your mouth staying slightly open, and you know, we can break that cycle and stop the headaches. I have also people who get really bad headaches and chew gum all day. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> they yeah. To stop the gum chewing. Or, they, or they chew really hard foods like jerky or really hard bread and, you know, the jaw is a muscle. We can overwork it, and I see people do that a lot. It's kind of funny. They don't want to stop chewing the gum, but they want the headache to go away. Wow. See, and it's interesting how we have that repetitive thing. It was so funny because um, I think it was yesterday's show saying, oh, and, and Dr. Kathy Gruber is going to be on our show tomorrow. It was a couple of days ago, and she's going to talk about, hey, how to get rid of that pain in your butt. Yeah, man, you, I know you have that wallet in your back of your pants, you know, because we've always <laughs> talked about that, men having that, like, they're, they're, you're going to all have an indent in a place you don't want it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, we do have to look at things like that, too. And I've had clients come in with 
low back pain or hip pain, and they do. They turn to go into the treatment room, and there's this gigantic wallet. It looks like George Costanza's wallet from Seinfeld. And, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, sitting on, you're sitting on this, you know, this big lump all day long. And, you know, you wouldn't wear one high heel and one flat shoe. It's the same yeah, thing. You're throwing your body out of balance. So everything you can do to keep your body in proper alignment is going to be better. And sometimes it is an easy fix of let's get the wallet out, let's um, switch the purse to another shoulder or take the boulders out of it. I mean, I picked up some women's purses and I, I could take a mugger out with the thing. I mean, they're so heavy. You know, they're weapons. Yeah, they're yeah, they weapons. weapons. It really yeah. is, which, you know, if you have to carry all that stuff, put it in a backpack, put it in a rolly thing, clean out your purse, you know. Um, so, yeah, I no, mean, there, there are things that you're we right can about that. change. You're right yeah. about the bag. And you said about the backpack. I have to tell you because, you know, when we hike in the parks and everything, I have this huge backpack because it's got all the camera gear. And right. I will tell you, half of the problem is I will sling the backpack on one shoulder and then not put it all the way on properly because I'm just, you know, I just start hanging it on one shoulder. And suddenly I'm walking and I'm like, dude, like I'm, you know, I already am dipping down on one arm because I have a rod in there. And I'm like, okay, don't, you know, <laughs> I'm swinging on that one. But this one's not going down because I'm just, you know, and all of a sudden all the pain goes to that one part of my shoulder just because of the way I'm wearing my backpack and not even putting the things in the backpack in a proper way so you're in alignment. Yeah. Yep, and I see that a lot. I mean, we do things that throw us out of whack, or we we stand on one leg because we tend to stand on our shorter leg and we thrust mm-hmm. one out to the side. And we see women do that all the time. It's you know the new Angelina Jolie pose. She was doing it to show off her legs. Most of us are doing it because we're crooked <laughs> and we stand on our <laughs> short leg and thrust the longer leg out next to us because if we stand on the longer leg, the short one kind of hovers in the air. Yeah, well, See, that, I don't there's stand that, that way. I stand like a Maasai. I do. I do. Well, I stand yeah. one leg. I do. I stand yeah, like a so fork. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't be that? able to. People shouldn't be able to run up and push you over. But yeah, so I mean, we we there are things that if we look at our bodies and we experiment with things, we can get to the root of the problem and and get rid of that pain. And that's one of the things I encourage my clients to do and the people in my lectures is you know, make sure we're really looking at what's going on in our bodies rather than turning to a quick fix because mm-hmm. that can be dangerous over time. But what about computers now? Because everybody's spending hours and hours. I mean, I find myself personally having to remind myself, hey, you for, you forgot to breathe. You, yeah. I'm so focused on something. I'm doing something, and I'll notice, oh, wait a minute, not only are you not breathing, but you're clenching your jaw. I'm not grinding my teeth, but I'm, like, frozen. <laughs> And yeah, or our shoulders myself, are up to our ears. Uh, hmm? Or our shoulders are up to our ears. You know, we're sitting there with yeah, our, our, it's like you're all our shoulders over. up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and frozen in time and you're not breathing, but but you're clicking away, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and getting carpal tunnel syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. But there's the action, but then, Kathy, at the same time, we can stop those actions, right? But when you are now in pain, like I, I can, when I start to get stressed and everything, um, it really, I, I've now really, I'm at this point of my life, like every night, every morning, or, you know, I massage my feet. I mean, you know, I'm, you know, I'm into Ayurveda and all of that, so it's like I massage my feet, my head, and suddenly, it, just by doing that, because it's mindful, I'm telling my body, chill out, man. You gotta just chill out, get away from the computer, stop it. You know, cause I'll wake up at four in the morning and start working, and forget to breathe, like Nancy says. But it's that, if you, carve that time out to do something for yourself, I think you're automatically telling your body because even bes- before I massage my feet, I start to calm down. Yeah. Yeah, because that's become a habit. And maybe it's a bath at night after a long day to wind down or time in the hot tub with your spouse. Or, you know, if we can set that time aside, it also asks us to slow down. And, you know, stress is the biggest cause of disease in this culture. Um, they're mm-hmm. estimating now that between 60 and 90% of our doctor's visits are stress-related illness. And oh, every crazy. time I've done, I, I mean, it depends on which expert, but still, even if it's 60, that's crazy. Um, it is so crazy. So if we can... If we can slow down, and every group I've spoken to, I'm just actually about to go speak to a a scleroderma conference. Um, I spoke with uh, arthritis sufferers and things like that, anybody with autoimmune. If you ask them if stress exacerbates their symptoms, every single one raises their hand and says, oh, yes, my pain is worse when I'm stressed. So Mm. if we can 
get rid of that stress response a little bit. And that is, you know, calming down to rub your feet or breathing, taking time for yourself and letting yourself know that you're important and you're on your own to-do list. Sometimes just something as simple as that can help the pain go, can help the pain diminish. Hmm. And then what about when is it time to go, okay, wait a minute, you know, um, you know, rubbing your feet just isn't good enough. I need to go get a, a real massage therapist. <laughs> you know, because I know, like, you've got a great DVD that teaches couples how to actually massage each other and, and do it properly because you can hurt yourself if you don't know what you're doing. Right. 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 And, and, you know, I do the karate chop. Yeah, and walk oh, on your yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't do that anymore. Um, actually, that is, a, that is a real technique. Um, it's called de po- de Pokemon, if you want to speak French. Um, yeah, the, the really? pounding thing. Yeah, uh, at least it looks good in movies. Uh, you know, I, yeah. I think we should all be getting massage. It is one of the best modalities. It's a really great way to start working with alternative medicine and natural health in your life. And it helps lower your blood pressure. It relaxes you. It in, invokes that relaxation response, which readies our brain for higher functioning. It feels good. It helps release the feel-good chemicals in the brain, especially when they've just found now that it releases um, oxytocin which is that bonding hormone that mothers get with their babies. And Ooh. the more physical stimulation we have, the more oxytocin we release. So the kinder we are to people, the more connected we feel with those around us. And we could, you know, not have any war at all, as the guy was saying before, if we would just have a little more oxytocin. So, you know, there's multiple benefits to massage. And it helps release pain. Um, it's one of the best things for pain. Same thing, and I think what goes hand in hand with that is chiropractic. And I often will... Halfway through a massage, say to a client, you know, you've got a rib out. I, you know, I can keep massaging you, but I really think the issue is structural. Mm. So, do you want to stop now? And I'll send you down the street to the chiropractor. Do you want to keep going? But I really recommend you go. And 90% of them go, that's a good idea. I should do that. So they go to the chiropractor, mm. um, or they'll go to their acupuncturist, who, you know, okay. that also releases the, the endorphins and helps us feel better. So, you know, there's multiple options that aren't involving medication to help get that pain to go away. Well, you know, when you talked about chiropractor and then we go into acupuncture, even acupressure, um, I'm just going to go right back to George Costanza. He's like, oh, yeah. not a chiropractor, that's not a real doctor, but it's actually there's so many people out there that, you know, really kind of go a chiropractor is, you know, woo-woo almost. And not oh, woo-woo. Re- no, 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 it's true. Um, and there's a difference between going to a spa for a massage and going to get medical massage. So do you see people kind of changing up this day and age? Because I think, you know, people are starting to get it now a little bit that we can have East and West medicine, that we can have more than one option than just here's your magic pill um, and take that when you need the magic pill. But um, are you seeing people kind of change their attitude? Yeah, absolutely. I'm seeing a big shift away from relying so much on our on our medical staff. And in some ways I think that's good because, we have a little more control and we can choose different practitioners and really take our health into our own hands. But on the flip side of that, I've had people who seriously need to get to a doctor who stand there and say, I don't like doctors. Well, you know, it's great, but you need to go. You know, um, I can massage you, but, you know, there's, there's a time to be smart about it and say, look, I really need to have a test. I need to have this diagnosed. I need to take a pill or have a surgery. And it's great to try other options first. But there are times where you just need to go to a doctor because your acupuncturist isn't going to be enough anymore or the herbs aren't going to work. Um, and I think we really have to learn to listen to our bodies to know, what is this right? something that I can handle right now or is this something that I need to seek more help for? And and I think we're learning. We're starting to learn the difference. And I think people are starting to, to make changes in how they make choices. Kathy, how much of this is also preventative medicine versus, okay, now I really hurt? Um, how much of this could we actually prevent pain? You know, even, let's go to massage too because, you know, I know we talk a lot about medical massage versus going to the spa, and I'm not knocking the spa experience, but how much is that really doing for us? Well, you know, the spa, I mean, the, going to the spa or just doing massage at all as a preventative thing? Yeah, like if you're if at a resort and they're like, here, go to the massage room in Vegas or wherever you are and go get a massage, you know. Um, you know, people it, where it's not medical massage. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, here's oh, your... Oh, sure. Yeah, the well, spa. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it totally, you know, there's, there's benefits to that too. And because Swedish massage, which is the most common one, that's the, the lighter strokes that we're all used to. That's what we're all trained in first. There's been tons of studies on that that show even that helps decrease pain. Because again, just that touch on the body is going to um, increase those feel-good hormones. It's going to turn off the pain responses in the brain. It's going to increase that, that oxytocin and, um, you know, all those types of things. So even getting a Swedish massage, though it's probably not going to affect as much physical change in the muscle, it might not get that knot to go away that's holding your neck in that weird position. It mm. will help. It's going to make you feel better. It's going to help relax you. And if the source of your major problems is stress, then just having that contact is going to help with the stress. The medical massage is great. That comes in, you know, when someone has a frozen shoulder or somebody has sciatica or they are post-accident or, you know, to me, if you have an actual issue, you should really be going to a practitioner that knows how to deal with issues. And I have had numerous people go to some of the um, shopping center massage chain now and walk out either not only dissatisfied but injured. Uh, because if you have a problem and the person doesn't know how to help that problem, you risk having a bigger problem. <laughs> and I've done, I've undone several of those massages now and I was, I worked on a court case uh, where someone got hurt in a situation like that. So mm-hmm. you want to be, if you have issues, you want to be careful where you go and you want to find someone that has experience in working with those issues. Mm. What about car accidents where people get whiplash and they walk mm-hmm. around in that brace? Are we still doing that, or is that something massage helps? Yeah, or you know, I haven't seen anybody in the neck brace in a long time. That's what um, I was I, just thinking about that. Yeah, I think they, they – here's what the ER is going to do. They may or may not give you some sort of scan to make like an MRI or CT to make sure your brain's okay, to make sure nothing's, mm-hmm. you know, internally bleeding. And then they're probably going to hand you a bunch of muscle relaxers and some pain pills. That's mm-hmm. going to be their first line of defense on that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's ice, let's do some really light massage, go to the chiropractor in the next week, and then let's work on it. So mm-hmm. that's actually where I might do more intervention than Western would. You know, Western hands you pills and says, let it rest. I want to get in there and start as soon as I can working to make sure it doesn't stay a permanent issue. And where, where are we, do you know, on, um, like, I. When I was way, way younger, I worked for an insurance company, and and automatically we pay doctor bills but not chiropractor bills. Has that changed? Right. Um, I have numerous people call me and ask if I take insurance. It's not that I don't take insurance. It's Mm -hmm. that insurance doesn't really take us. (laughs) Right. Uh, Yeah. You're regular. Yeah. It, you know, it still is. Your regular health insurance, your PPOs, your Blue Cross, your you know, all this stuff, they're not going to cover massage. When massage will be covered, usually, and there's a case by case thing, if it's a car accident where you have um, personal injury uh, insurance or if it's a workman's comp case, oftentimes if you have a prescription, I almost said subscription, if you have a prescription from a doctor <laughs> and you go to somebody who knows how to do the billing, who knows how to do the soap notes, I bill um, workers' comp and personal injury eh, maybe four or five times a year because people Mm -hmm. come to me needing the medical massage, but I've got the program and the computer that does the billing for me. You have to send it in. You have to hope you'll get paid the full amount. They've now changed it where workers' comp has to be approved ahead of time. You can only do 15-minute segments. You can only do one appointment a week. There's all these rules about it. But if you've been in been in a car accident, or a workers' comp case, and you need massage, look into getting it because it's better to have maybe two 15-minute sessions a week that are paid for than nothing at all if you mm-hmm. can't pay out of pocket for it. Or the other option with a car accident is to make sure you get a prescription, go to a massage therapist that knows what they're doing, have them take notes and keep billing records, and then you can put that towards your expenses when you do your settlement. That's, I also have a lot of people that do that. Good, good point, because I think this is part of the issue, too. And I, I have to tell you that Steve Schnickert, our friend, um, he's, he's a, a great publicist based up in Northern California, and he has done a lot of massage therapy. He actually helped geriatric patients. That's what he says. He was doing physical and occupational therapy for them, mm-hmm. and he was agreeing with you about listening to your body. And then he just had, he sent an email going, I love Dr. Kathy. She is right on and knows what she's talking about. So I just have to share that with you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, Steve is cool, and you know what? He really he's been on his own medical journey with MS, and and going, you know what? I'm going to kick butt in life and not let that hang me down. So yeah. he's listened to your show a couple times with us, and and really enjoys it when you come on. Uh, Kathy, 
you know, when we think about all of this, and, and he made a good point, too, it's about listening to your body. Mm-hmm. What can we do? You know, because I've got into a routine like we were talking about. How do we take that step and slow down? I know it's simple as, you know, for me, I'm like, yeah, everybody slow down. It's very difficult. Um, I think that you do actually almost have to go into a routine so that it does happen. Right. I find a really great time to do that that self-assessment thing is either when you wake up in the morning and you do that laying in bed debating whether you truly want to get up that day or not, um, that's a really good time to kind of scan your body and see how you're feeling. Or when you're in the shower. I mean, you're in there anyway. Uh, take that time to kind of move around and go, how do my lungs feel today? Do I have any aches? Do I have any pains? How is, oh, that shoulder was hurting yesterday. How is it today? And that's a little bit better. You know, it's a time to... Go inside. And one of the big problems I see right now is there's so many distractions outside. I mean, we have computers in our purses now. We have contact with Internet and Facebook and Twitter, you know, 24-7 at any given time. Everybody I see is on their phone. It is pulling us outside of ourselves. We have to turn off the devices and sit still for just a minute. Maybe it's five minutes before you go to bed. Maybe it's, you know, you feed the animals and you're waiting for them to finish eating. You're waiting for something to fax. You're waiting for something to print. There are still moments where there is stillness. And we can take that to really go inside and see what our bodies are trying to tell us. And, you know, I've said this before. It's like we know when the car is making a funny noise and we can describe it in an instant to our mechanic. When we go uphill at 30 miles an hour and we turn left at a 90-degree angle, it goes click, 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 click. We notice that. Mm. We don't notice. We don't notice when our body's going click, 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 click. Or we notice it and then go, "Oh wait a minute, how long has that been happening?" Mm. Because we don't we don't pay attention. We have to know what's happening because whether we're going to an acupuncturist, a Reiki practitioner, uh, an MD, a chiropractor, if we can't tell them what's wrong, find a word to describe the pain. You know, we have to know to be able to communicate it, and that is the key to our health is communication. Well, I can tell if I don't take that time zone out, like you're talking about, I'm, that's when things start to get really woo-woo in your brain and everything starts mm-hmm. to go off. You know, yep. you start to have really illogical behavior that you don't normally have. I can attest well, I don't know, to I'm that. Wrong, but, <laughs> but, no, but the, let's, let's look at this. PMS is one of those things that women deal with all the time. Um, yep. I don't, I, just personally, <laughs> sorry, men, but I actually think men and women both need to communicate on this. Because I'm tired of the oh someone's snippy because they're PMSing. Actually, let's I all think men do it too. I think men do. I absolutely do believe men have PMS. But yeah. <laughs> there is this as a woman. I think because of the change in our bodies, you can feel that change. Mm-hmm. I I don't I don't know if it's um, like I don't know if I'm just really in tune with the moon or whatever's going on. <laughs> but like I can tell you like by hour, by day, what's going on with my body in that way. Yeah. Like I know, mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. I mean, it's just, and then I see women who suddenly don't even know they're having their period. I go, how do you not know, you know? How do yeah. you not know or feel that this is, I mean, I can feel that egg drop, dude. Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. No, I agree. That's not really bad. Me. Sorry, how, Steve. How do, you, Easter bunny. How, do you, how do you go nine months and not know you're pregnant? Oh, this is oh, a TV we had show. I don't understand. How do you yeah. go nine months and not notice the weight gain, your period stops, oh, and a baby falls out? Whoops. I don't All I'm saying is, Then you get honey boo-boo. I'm just saying whatever they're taking, I want some. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just baffled by that. But, but, you know, and also, I mean, people are at different sensitivity levels to things. Just like, you know, my husband's really good at... He can smell wine and tell you what that smells like. He can taste it and detect all these great flavors. I'm pretty good at it, but it's not my strong suit. I can look Mm. at someone's body and do a very quick assessment of what I think is happening in it. Same thing, you know, they get on the table and I say, oh, your shoulder's better than it was last time. And they say, you can actually tell that this is different than it was three weeks ago? Yeah, I just have that sense memory. I can also tell when I ovulate. I've been, you know, I was at dinner with a girlfriend and I went, ooh. And she said, what? And I said, I just ovulated. She's like, seriously? <laughs> you know that? I said, yeah. yeah. Okay, I just have to say, genetically, men are predisposed to have a better sense of smell because they're supposed to be the hunters yeah. and the yeah. protectors, and they're supposed to know when stuff is going to Okay, gonna okay, happen. no, i got to no, bring this no, up now. True. I have to so. bring this up, Kathy. You'll enjoy this, okay? 
And then, you know, I was, you know, I was laughing earlier saying I stand like a messiah. I actually do. I mean, I grew up it's with that. It's not attractive. It's, I just no, have you to stand with your, your <laughs> one leg and I can, I don't know, you bend your other leg and you lean you, it on your like knee. She looks like a big bird. You know, with, to the side you of like a like weird. You look like a big bird yeah, when you do weird, that. But it's a, it's a resting position and you're all, it's almost yoga It's you know? okay, but, but not in the supermarket, but, all right? But, you know, I remember. <laughs> no, our, seriously, big bird in the supermarket. No, There's Lisa. No, but trying to read a label standing like a Maasai. Okay, but, but, seriously, I had a friend who could smell and tell when a girl was mm-hmm. having her period. And yeah. I remember the, our Genetic. friend, the Commodore, has passed since. He, he just to this day, well, not now, but, I mean, he mm. used to sit there every time we talked with him, can you smell it? <laughs> he used to mess with me because we, he never would believe me that you could smell when a person was having their period. And I can, I can totally mm-hmm. tell too, and it's weird, and I'm not, I'm, I know this is a very strange conversation, but isn't it just about having our so senses? Can lions, hyenas, yeah, and it's part of, of being back to our natural senses, and I think yeah. people mask their sense with all these perfumes and all this Bounce. crap. And it's horrible. I mean, the other day I went into the market and I had to leave because this woman basically was a walking bounce bomb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it's true. It's like, you know, you go through, there's perfume and everything's scented and everything's got a fragrance to it. And, you know, we forget just the same thing as being, you know, externally distracted with phones and computers and Twitter. And, you know, yeah. we're also distracted. We're not in our natural environment anymore. Right. Everything has a fragrance now, and it, it's I can't stand that stuff. We do not use fabric softener with a scent. I don't want things that plug in and make my house smell like fruit. It's like if your house smells that bad, what's the problem with the house? I mean, why do you need uh, to cover it up with, you, you know? You might try cleaning it. And then, you know, with my mother's generation, it was, you know, the FDS and the spraying yourself to make your, you know, smell like baby powder. And it's like, but why does it smell? Maybe there's the an Maybe little there's... dogs bite. Pomeranians, <laughs> it's true. Pomeranians and Chihuahuas bite just because of how people smell. I, I know this for a fact. Oh gosh, <laughs> Kathy, what has happened? What is? I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I should know. go. This is getting out of hand. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, but sorry, Steve. <laughs> no, it's true. They don't. Li- you, I, you want to You want to test it out? Put some perfume on your finger and put it right by a Chihuahua's nose, and he will, she will bite you. Because it is that offensive. Kathy, but at the same time, half of these scents, I mean, for me, I get into an allergic reaction like you wouldn't believe, yeah. and I will get a headache from it. Yeah. So do you think of part of these headaches and pains that we have are from all these chemical things that we're surrounded by? I think so much of the things we're having are because of all the chemical things we're surrounded by. I mean, stress is a big issue. Uh, all the toxins in our environment, in our food, mm-hmm. in our water, and you know, that's an issue. Um, and also I think a lot of people have food sensitivities. I think we're putting things mm-hmm. in our mouths that we shouldn't be, like artificial sweetener, big cause of headaches. MSG, wow. huge cause of headaches. Um, high fructose corn syrup, give me a headache. Um, you know, Uh-oh. so I think there's these things, and don't go there. I think there's these yeah. things that, you know, we're, we're <laughs> consuming that we're not even aware are doing us harm. And we need to get back to real food, less stress response. And again, we can't necessarily control the stress. We can control our response. So we need to do that, whether it's visualization. And I know in the, in the article I wrote, I talk about, you know, visualizing for pain and things like that. So, you know, there's, there's options other than pop on the Vicodin. There really are. Mm. Now, Kathy, um, I know before you go, I do want to bring up two main things. Number one, let's talk about your TV series. What's up? Mm. On the Alternative yes. Medicine Cabinet on OTV. When, yeah. when, when do we get to watch this? That's a very good question. Um, I got a phone call yesterday saying that they were finishing up the titling on cool. the um, pilot episode and that they were going to get it to me today. That didn't happen. Um, so I'm looking oh. for it for next week. Um, so I will at least have the sample episode then, and we're going to decide when the rest are going to be done and in what time frame. But we'll all at least have the sample, which to me is huge because then we can really start the marketing push. I can really start doing more with having the sample episode. So I'm very excited about that. So it's coming. It's coming. Cool. I love that. This, this is going to be a couple... the... Go ahead. Well, I say this is going to be a couple weeks of completion for me because my second book is almost done too. So it's yeah. Oh. yeah, concluding. 
And then didn't you change up the cover on your on the alternative medicine cabinet too? I did. I did. I did the second edition of the alternative medicine cabinet. I didn't change any of the content um, because I'm working on the second book and didn't want that to stall by going through and redoing some stuff. But I, I changed mm-hmm. the cover simply to reflect the fact that I'm now a PhD and not master's, which I have my master's when I did the book. Um, but also I have a new forward talking about the TV show. Uh, but, yeah, so that's going to be – I should have them all in the mail maybe today, actually. Uh, but, yeah, so new cover on the book. The TV show's coming. The second book is in its final stages. I'm waiting for a fabulous forward from a really wonderful woman and a couple um, endorsements for the back, and I'm hoping that will be out in November. So that's what I'm sure. Wow, about. excellent. Yeah, uh, rock it now. Now let's talk about the cruise to Alaska. Yes, if you ever wanted to go on an Alaskan cruise, and every you're going to get to Alaska to, before us. This is rude. Yeah, Can I just say I've this? already this is I've already been. This is not right. I've already been. I know. I know. We went I'm just last jealous. Year. Yeah. Oh well, that's okay. You can come this time. Okay. It's next September. It's next September, and there's going to be four phenomenal speakers. Myself, um, a woman who deals with spirituality and health, a gal who does healthy hormones. Uh, we're going to be having dance classes and yoga classes and 20-plus hours of education, as well as the full cruise. So we're going to Ketchikan, Sitka, Juneau, Victoria, British Columbia. And then on the at Sea days, we're going to be having this conference on health and wellness. It's going to be phenomenal. So if you go to my nice. website, there's a banner at the top. We're having an early bird special right now where you get uh, you get dinner with us. You get entered into drawings to win a bunch of consults and books and DVDs and tapes and all sorts of stuff. So Sign up now. There's also a payment plan. So if you oh, sign yeah, up now, you can take it. Now. Yeah. yeah, take advantage of the payment and, yeah. and the and the early bird. I mean, you get a lot of cool things that other people aren't going to get or that you'd have to pay extra for if you sign up now. So head to Alaska with us next September 2013. It's going to be so much fun. I want this cruise packed with our people. It's going to be such a blast. Right on. I think this is cool. So Kathy Groover, Dr. Kathy Groover's cruising it, and she's doing an alternative medicine style. Check it out. Go, go to the alternativemedicinecabinet.com for that, and you can also keep up with her. And, and the news that is really one of the best ways to keep up with you, too. I know you're on uh, yeah. Twitter at KL Groover, and you're on Facebook under Kathy Groover as well. Um, but I think your newsletter is phenomenal, too. It's got a lot of great oh, tips. Thanks. thanks. So yeah, everyone, I just switched newsletter to... companies, so uh, a new one will be going out next week. Right on. The Alternative Medicine Cabinet, everyone. Also, Kathy's article, Even Dealing with Pain, go to the, uh, excuse me, qualityoflifemagazine.com. And uh, thanks for talking about eggs. (laughs) Oh, of course. No problem. (laughs) I I love that about you because at the end of the day, people don't want to talk about stuff like that, Kathy. They don't. It it becomes this big no-no to talk about things, and I think that's part of the medical problem in our country and the society. Is is the body? Yeah, the elusive PMS. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but well, and actually, also, but yeah. so many aspects of it. I mean, I have a girlfriend whose friend won't let me say the word poop because <laughs> she, 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 her out. she can't even hear. She can't even hear. Yeah. Yeah. She can't even hear. Yeah. She can't even hear the word poop. So. poop. So I yeah. know, and that was you know that was my highest watched video was my video on I'm poop. Sure, because we all want to say poop. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. funny. Well, this girl doesn't. Do she what we're not supposed to do. You got to look uh-huh. at it, man. You got to look at your poop. Well, I got to tell video. you, the poop whether you like it or not. Yeah, so. you might. I hope so. You know, check it out. Embrace the poop. And if you, and if you poop. don't poop, you're in big trouble. <laughs> Kathy, this is Friday afternoon. Can you tell? <laughs> I, I know I'm on it. <laughs> all right, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll keep in touch. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend. You too. Take, Take care. care. Bye-bye. Bye bye.